friends and welcome to Obsidian Soft. Let's make a weather app in MIT App Inventor today. Unlike other tutorials you might find online, we will not use an extension. I try to avoid extensions as much as possible as extensions don't work on iPhones. We will use an API that is application programming interface and we will use the API by weatherapi.com. You will first need to make an account at weatherapi.com to get an API key. Remember we did the same thing while making our chat GPT app? That is, we made an open AI account to get an API key. The process is quite similar, so let's go ahead and make an account and verify it. So just sign up and you need to enter your information here. So just sign up, verify the account by opening your email address. So just verify it by clicking that link. And now just go to the login page and just log in by providing the same details, the username and the password. As you can see that this is my API key and they have also given me the privilege of using their Pro Plus plan for about 15 days. So you can explore the advanced features after completing the basic app that I will teach in this class. Before starting our app inventor project, let's see how the API returns a response once we post a request to it. We will need to interpret this response in our app and show understandable information to the user. So first of all, copy this key, this API key, and then go to this API Explorer and paste this key. Please do not use my API key. You have to get your own API key, okay? So just make an account as I have shown the process of making the account in front of you and get your own API key. So I'm going to use a secure protocol and the format is JSON. That is the format of the response. And I have covered JSON in a previous tutorial that is JavaScript object notation and APIs usually return responses in this notation and the apps have to interpret this JSON. Thankfully, the JSON returned by weatherapi.com is fairly simple as I will show you just now. So. The value Q is the city, the name of the city. And we can also give them a postcode, a US zip code, or a UK postcode, okay? And even an IP address too. But for the sake of simplicity, we are just going to be giving a city name here. And if I press this show response button, you can see that it has returned me this response body. As you can see, it is returning dictionaries. We are interested in the dictionary that we will get if we provide the key is equal to current. That is, we are interested in this current dictionary and within it, we are interested in this temperature, temp underscore C for Celsius, temp underscore F for Fahrenheit. So depending on what you want your app to show, Okay, and then we are interested in this condition dictionary in which we have this text partly cloudy, which is showing the weather description for London. And it even gives us an image, an icon for the weather. And we will be using this information in our app. That is temperature, this text inside condition dictionary and the icon. Okay, and this is fairly simple to interpret using MIT App Inventor JSON blocks. Don't be confused as I will show you the exact blocks. The next thing I would like to show you are the docs. So if I go to docs, I can have a look at all the other information that is being returned. But what I'm interested is in are the API error codes. So as you can see that if the error code is greater than or equal to 400, it means that there is something wrong with the response, there is an error. So we are going to capture that in our app too, okay? So let's go ahead and make our app. Go to MIT App Inventor, go to Project, start a new project and call it Weather App. 
For screen one, make a line horizontal center, a line vertical center, and I'm going to give a custom blue color. So this is the basic blue. I'm going to go to custom and make it a bit duller. Okay, so this is a nice color. Now from layout, drag and drop a horizontal arrangement. Make height 20% and make the width fill parent and also make a line horizontal center, a line vertical center and the background color is none. From user interface, drag and drop a label and we also need a text box and we need a button again from user interface okay and I'm just going to customize the font and the color so label one is city label so renaming is also important and this is font bold font size 20 and it says city and the text color is white text box again font bold font size 20 and the hint is enter city name okay let me rename this text box to city text and button is rename it to submit button and the background color i'm going to make it white font size 20 font bold shape is rounded and the text on it says submit okay so you can customize it the way you want it to look next i'm going to drag and drop from the user interface an image below this horizontal arrangement let's rename it to weather icon again drag and drop a label below this weather image and this will be our description label and Again, font bold, font size 20, and I'm going to make the text color white. And let's say it's the description here. And let's just duplicate it. So select it, Control C, Control V for Windows, and Command C, Command V for Mac OS. Rename it to Temp LBL and the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it bigger so size 50 and I'm going to make the font color yellow okay and this is the temperature so let's say it's temp okay last but not the least from connectivity drag and drop a web component this we will use to communicate with the weather API servers and this is an invisible component so let's go to the block section now to start the coding. So first of all, we are going to make a global variable for our API key and put in an empty text block, duplicate it, rename to response, and this will contain the response sent by the server. And this will contain the actual API key. Now make sure that you use your own API key and not the API key that I'm showing in this tutorial, okay? So I'm going to go to my account and again, copy this key, okay? By pressing the copy button and come back to MIT App Inventor and paste the key here, okay? So this is my key. Now. What happens when someone presses the submit button? We get the on click event, and inside here, we are going to first set up our URL for our web component. So go to web and get the set URL block. And inside here, we have to join multiple text strings, and we need five slots in that join. So get that and click on the cog wheel and add five of them okay and let's go back to our dashboard and 
click on this API Explorer again and give it the API key again here and show the response. And this is the call. This is the important bit that we have to put inside our web.url. So just copy it till this equal mark, okay? Before the API key starts. So copy it, come back, put a text block here, paste it here, okay? Now, the second slot is for the API key. So hover over it, get the get block for it, come back here, and this is and q is equal to, and then there's the city name. So we have to put and q is equal to, just copy it and come back here, another text block, and paste it here. So this is and q is equal to, okay? And then we have the city name. So a city text box will contain the city name that has been provided by the user. So just get the text for it. Okay. And the last thing in our call is and AQI is equal to no. So just copy this part, come back and then paste it here. So this is a complete call. And after we have set up our URL, we are going to call web1.get. So this will send the URL to the server and this will trigger an event of the web component got text. Okay. So remember we talked about the response code that is a response code greater than or equal to 400 means an error. So we are going to use if else block from control and we are going to use a maths block, this equal to block and greater than or equal to. And then we are going to plug in 400 here. And if our response code, if I hover over it, I can get the get block for it. If our response code is greater than or equal to 400, this means that there's, there's something wrong with our response content. So we should show the user gracefully that the data was not found. So how can we do that? First of all, we are going to set our weather icon to this, that is no available assets. Second, we are going to set our description label, the one that was supposed to get the description of the weather to data not found, okay? So text block. And if I duplicate it and make it the temperature label, I'm just going to make it empty, okay? Otherwise, we are going to show the proper temperature and weather to the user. And how to do that? We have to interpret the JSON. So first of all, we are going to put the decoded JSON inside our response. So get the set block for it. Okay. And go to web and get this JSON text decode with dictionaries. Okay. So this will decode the JSON text into dictionaries for us. So this will do a lot of good work for us. So if I hover over response content, I can get the get block for it. So this will decode the response content into dictionaries. Now it is our job to look inside that dictionary to see where our useful information is. Now I'm going to go slowly over this thing. We have a temperature label, okay? So I'm going to set its text to the temperature provided by weatherapi.com, but remember, I need that degrees Celsius symbol too. So I'm actually going to do a join, okay? And this will contain the degree Celsius, so I can just go to Google, and Google is your best friend, degree Celsius, and if I go down, I can 
copy it, come back and here paste it. After a space, press on the space bar and then paste it, okay? Now, we have to show the actual temperature that we will get from our dictionary. So how to do that? If I go back here, I have the temperature inside this dictionary that corresponds to the key current, okay? So I have to get this dictionary first. So how to do that? I go to dictionaries and I get value for key. And what is the key? The key is current, okay? And what comes in dictionary? That is the decoded JSON text, okay? So that is our response. Now, let's go back here. Inside here, we have this temperature and depending upon whether we are showing it in Celsius or Fahrenheit, I'm going to be using this because I want to show it in Celsius. So this is the key temp underscore C, okay? So we have to use that. Okay, so let me get another get value for key and I'm going to plug this in here and the text block and this is temp underscore C. Next is slightly more complicated because if you look here, our weather description, that is the text that is describing the weather, is inside a dictionary at the same level as temperature. So we have to go further inside. So once you get the hang of it, it will become easy for you too. So just first of all, let's get the description set text. And here I have to do exactly the same thing. So just duplicate this one. But here I have to go inside condition. And I have to get further inside condition get value for key and plug this in here. And what is the key now? The key is text, remember? So current condition text. Let's verify it. Current condition text, okay? And last but not the least, our weather icon. The icon is at exactly the same level as text, but remember, we have to add an HTTP colon to it here. So we need another join. That is needed to construct a valid web address to get the image from weather API servers. So, weather icon, set its picture, do a join, the first text block HTTP colon. Okay. By the way, we can also use HTTPS here. So I can duplicate this. And change this to icon. And believe you me, this is done. Our basic weather app with a nice, clean and attractive user interface is ready. I hope you have as much fun making this app as I had while designing and making it for you. Again, you don't need any extension for this weather app. Just make a free account on weatherapi.com and you are good to go. If you like my work, please share it with friends and family. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, kindly do so so that you don't miss any of the great projects that I've planned for you. Thank you for watching this video. Have a good day and goodbye.